Do not go gentle into that good night. Old age should burn and rave at close of day. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. Hello and welcome back to OmniSpace. Today I'm going to be exploring some of the key lessons that I've gleaned over the last year. 2020 has been a crazy year. We've had the COVID pandemic, which has radically transformed the way we work and disrupted socialization. And many, of course, have lost their lives. We've also had the anti-racism protests as a result of the death of George Floyd and other victims of police brutality, which have reignited conversations around racial equality and justice. And finally, of course, we had the US presidential election, which was both entertaining, but also very symbolic of the division that is present in the US and, and across the entire world. Personally, I've had three major phases that have defined my year. I had to relaunch my hashtag Get the to Cambridge campaign, which was successful, thankfully. I managed to raise the money that I needed in order to complete my law degree at Cambridge at University. The second phase has been completing the first term at Cambridge. It has been a pretty incredible journey. I've enjoyed the intensity of the course. Uh, I've learned a lot. I've grown as a legal scholar. Um, you know, they, they cram a lot in, in the first eight weeks. Of course, the COVID restrictions have impacted the way that um, learning has been done. Most of the learning is online, but I've, I've enjoyed it. I've, I've uh, appreciated every moment. The third phase has been founding Omnispace and working on all of the other projects that I'm very passionate about, like TechShift and Law Tech Society. I want to share with you some of the key insights that I've gained this year. Some of these insights aren't new to me, but they were reinforced as a result of everything that's happened. I hope these insights will prove useful to you in the upcoming year, which promises to have its own fair share of craziness. There's a lot I could talk about, but I'm going to focus on five key themes, which are purpose, impact, resilience, self-awareness, and gratitude. Why do I think purpose is important? Well, first I should probably start by defining what I mean by purpose. If I were to define my purpose in one line, it would be to be a positive steward for, for social change. My campaign revealed that there's still a lot that needs to be done when it comes to improving access to higher education, to further studies. When I started this year, I, you know, I had no idea just how things would turn out, but the, the thing that kept me going was understanding that by getting into Cambridge, it would open a lot of doors for myself. Of course, I would have access to, to great opportunities. But more importantly, I would be able to use it as a platform to help others. One of the things that's really helped me to reinforce my purpose is by having a vision board. A vision board is really effective uh, in that it gives you a visual representation of your goals. We all know that images are, are powerful. They speak a thousand words. And the brain is really good at encoding the sort of deeper meaning and, and symbolism of images. And so yeah, every every day I I have a look at my, my vision board at the start of the day and just contemplate what it would be like to, to actually achieve those those goals and having a, a renewed sense of optimism. The other daily practice which has really helped me improve my sense of purpose is uh, writing in my journal twice a day. At the start of the day, I spend quite a bit of time uh, declaring, you know, what kind of impact I want to have in the world today. You know, um, I think it's, it's helpful to, to have these grand ideas and grand ambitions, what you want to achieve a year from now, or five years from now, or even 40 years from now. But I think it's, it's so important to stay grounded and, and, and understand that if you want to achieve these grand ambitions, you'll, you'll need to cultivate daily habits and break up those big objectives into smaller, smaller chunks. For me, resilience is understanding that while you will inevitably face adversities, as long as you maintain a positive attitude, you'll be able to overcome pretty much anything that comes your way. 
even when it comes to adversities which are just beyond our control, like a pandemic, there are still things in your life which you have control of. You, you still have control over your response to, to these adversities. And that's something that Stephen Covey talks about in his, in his book, uh, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective uh, People. And I think it's such, a, it's such an important maxim uh, you know, between stimulus and response, one has the freedom to choose. I'd go a step further and say that by using your imagination as your ability to look beyond your present reality and your conscious, which tells you, you know, what's right and what's wrong, you can make much better choices and respond much better. And that's definitely been a feature of my, my year. There were plenty of occasions where I could have uh, given up, where I could have just you know, decided to to let the fact that we're in this global pandemic or that, you know, racial inequality is still a fact of of reality. I could have let that discourage me to the point of giving up, but I, I, I chose not to. And that's precisely because I envisioned uh, a better future for myself, a better future for my family, for my friends, and, and the wider community. Lots of people have this very obsolete idea of what it means to be resilient, that you sort of show no weakness or that you, you know, you're completely invulnerable. I think that's you know, completely false. Um, sure, I think it's important not to be visibly uh, phased by every adversity you face. But I think it's also important to recognize that none of us are new uh, to the ebbs and flow of life. And so it's perfectly fine to be, to be vulnerable, to confide in, in family and friends and, and those you trust. I think you know cultivating self-awareness helps with your resilience because by understanding who you are and your tendencies and various contexts, whether that's in terms of relationships, family, uh, personal growth, career, um, you are able to better ground yourself and, and situate yourself and and you know make fine tweaks. Um, to your, to your tendency. What I know from my personality test that I have a tendency to be very rational when it comes to um, dealing with problems and, and predicaments and, and adversities. And while that can be super helpful in terms of, sort of uh, getting, uh, getting all the facts uh, and, and, and evidence, it can be, um, it can take a toll on my emotional state because it's, you know, but when faced with a problem, it's, also, it's important to, to sort of just be aware of how it makes you feel and not detach yourself to the point that you become uh, robotic and mechanic and you don't pay due regard to your, to the state of your soul. And so you're yeah, having a healthy balance between rationality and emotional coping, I think is, is so important. Um, because some issues aren't logic based. You know, it can be very hard when faced with a situation that can't be fixed through some effortless formula or a clear and precise plan of action. It can leave you feeling helpless, frustrated and, and distressed and that's definitely been my experience uh, on occasion. So some issues just can't be resolved, at least not immediately and life at times requires us to really adapt and rely on the emotional connection that we have with those closest to us to endure. Gratitude is a very interesting concept for me because I think a lot of people have this idea that it's hard to be grateful when there is so much chaos around your experience hardship and so you know, how do you maintain a positive mindset? How do you, how do you keep being grateful? I think that Gratitude is largely about perception. It's understanding that while there is adversity and pain and struggles, there is still so much to be thankful for. A necessary consequence of you being able to watch this video is that you are self-aware and that you're able to engage with other human beings. I think that's an amazing quality, an amazing reality. We have family, friends, uh, we have the ability to wake up and work at home 
with you know enough jams. Gratitude isn't isn't about being naive to the challenges that we face uh, in life, but it's it's about being present and and being grateful for what you what you already have, and understanding that no amount of uh, material possessions or achievements will will satisfy. You. There's always going to be more. Um, that, that you can achieve and so that satisfaction is about you know looking inward and being grateful for seemingly small things. Most of us see the start of a new year as a new beginning but I think we should bring that renewed sense of purpose every day. Every moment we, we open our eyes we can view that day as an opportunity to improve ourselves, improve the lives of others, to approach it with a renewed sense of creativity wonder and excitement. I want to wish you a restful and productive break and may this new year bring you and your loved ones happiness and health. Do not go gentle into that good night. Alexa, happy new year. Happy new year. Here's hoping 2021 is better than 2020. You and me both, sister. Any other jokes that you guys can think of? Okay, why did the dinosaur cross the road? Because chickens weren't invented. <laughs> Surrounded by very witty people in my life. <laughs>